how much is this one? Uh, Ninety-five, madam. That's a genuine amethyst. No, too much. Haven't you something cheaper, but looks more expensive? I've shown you our entire stock, madam. Well, I don't think I want a new clip anyway. Thanks just the same. Not at all, madam. Glad to serve you. Good day, madam. Good day. Yes, madam. You're a fat old fool, madam. I hope you choke, madam. Mamie, keep an eye on the stand for me, will you? I'll be back in a minute. Okay, Betty, go ahead. Why do we have to search the place again? We went through it twice yesterday. I've been seeing lace pants in my sleep. Ah, these stealing epidemics come and go. As soon as we make a pinch, they'll let up. Hey, McGuire says if we don't find nothing in these lockers, we gotta search the girls. Well, that'll be an improvement. You start over there. Well, what do you know about... Well, how do you like that? Big as life. I had a hunch the crook was going to get careless. Gee, now I don't get a chance to search Miss Rickenstall. Listen, love bug, forget Miss Rickenstall. We got to report the dame that belongs to this locker. Mary Turner. Mr. Gilder? Yes? McGuire speaking. We've got her. Bring her up. I'll deal with this one myself. Have Mr. Demarest here when McGuire arrives. Yes, sir. And, uh... What time did they call from the airport? Over half an hour ago. He ought to be here any minute. Mm. What our boy, Sarah. Left Los Angeles at 3 o'clock this morning, and he'll be in the store for lunch. That's a record, Sarah. 330 miles an hour, continuous flight. Down once. That's going places. I don't know where he gets it. Maybe his father had something to do with it. No, no. <laughs> He's more of a whale beater than I ever was. Hello, Joe. Hello, Mr. Gilder. Hello, Dad. Well, Slowpoke, what delayed you? I got a little bit lost, Ed. Well, I suppose if that hadn't happened, you'd have been here for breakfast. Yeah, I suppose I would. Hey, that's my tie. Well, you can get another one. <sighs> How are you, sir? Sit down, Mr. Gelder. You must be awfully tired. Well, I am a little. I'll send Mr. Demers right in, Mr. Gelder. Well, son, you did a good job. Everything broke good for me. Weather, wind, and nothing fell off the engine. Hmm. Dick, I, uh, I got a little surprise for you. I'm opening up an airplane department. Dad, that's swell. The only department store in the country carrying a line of airplanes. And you're in charge. Now let's see if you can break any records as a salesman. Well, that's marvelous, Dad. We'll clean up. Well, I don't know about cleaning up, but we'll attract a little attention and we may sell an extra pair of gloves. I'll have all your customers doing tailspins within a week. <laughs> well, I've got to get bathed and changed. I'll see you at lunch. All right. Hello, Dick. Congratulations. Thanks, Mr. Demarest. How's the attorney business? Still squaring traffic tags? Not since you've been away. Ouch, that'll teach me a point. <laughs> see you later. So long, Dick. You want to see me, Mr. Gilder? Yes, George. McGuire's got the thief. Good. Mr. Gilder, I hope you won't weaken and let this one go the way you did the last one. Not if I've got a case. I've had my lesson. You've been much too lenient. You have to make an example of these people. Is McGuire there? Yes, Mr. Gilder. Send him in. Hello, Sarah. Mr. Gilder, Mac's making a terrible mistake. They caught a red-handed, Mr. Gilder. This stuff was right in our locker. You must have gotten into the wrong locker. It couldn't have been mine. There's no mistake, Mr. Gilder. Not possibly. Topaz clip, $175. Gold earrings, $80. Gold and platinum money clip, $95. The cigarette case, $65 in her coat pocket. Well, how'd they get there? That's what we're asking you. Well, you don't... You can't think I stole them. You didn't buy them, did you? Don't look at me like that. I didn't... I'm not a thief. I never stole anything in my life. Well, can't you see I'm telling the truth? Please, please believe me. But the jewelry is found in your possession. No, in my locker. But I didn't put it there. I suppose somebody else stole them and put them in your locker. Well, yes, yes, they must have. How could anyone else get in your locker? I don't know. I must have left it unlocked. Look, Mr. Gilder, I found these in her purse. Phone tickets. Perhaps you can explain that, miss. Yes, they're for my watch and dressing case. 
I had to have some money. I, I'm studying at night school, designing. I want to be a buyer. Then you do admit that you needed money? No. Well, yes, just a little. I... Oh, I see. Mr. Gilder, don't listen to them. Don't you see that I'm not lying? Do you think I could look at you like this if I'd ever stolen anything from you? It's no use, Mr. Turner. You can't act your way out of this. We're only wasting time. Come along, Miss Turner. Mr. Gilder, aren't you going to give me a chance to prove I'm innocent? You'll get your chance in court. In court? In court? Mary Turner, you've been found guilty of grand larceny in the second degree. Have you anything to say before sentence is pronounced? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Gilder, once more I swear to you before God I'm not a thief. You're punishing an innocent person. If you would re-employ this girl, I could give her probation. No, Your Honor, I'm sorry, but I feel that I must let the law take its course. Then it becomes my duty, Miss Turner, to sentence you to three years in the state prison. The sentence may seem severe, but the law is explicit. Without recommendation from the complainant, I have no other course. Without recommendation. One word from you and this wouldn't happen to me. But you won't say it. Oh, how dare you not say it? How dare you take three years of my life and ruin the rest of it just to save a few of your rotten dollars? Take her away. Three years isn't forever, Mr. Gilder. When I come out, you're going to pay me for every minute of it. There won't be a day or an hour when I won't remember what you've done to me and you're going to pay me for it. You took away every chance I had to be happy and that's a lot to pay for. But you're going to do it, do you hear me? You're going to pay me and pay me in full! Well, well, hasn't changed a bit. I was sort of hoping they put in a penthouse. Come on, Mary. You know, it really isn't so bad. It's a great place to climb on the wagon and get a good rest. Is it? Yeah, and besides, nobody can get you on the telephone. You don't have to worry about what you're going to wear, money, or getting your hair fixed. Now, I guess that's right. Come on, you can do three years standing on your head. Cheer up. Thanks, I'll try. Come on, girls. Miss Barton. What are you looking at? Just my luck. The last man I'm going to see in two years, and he's got to look like you. What was the charge? Well, I had some letters an old chin chucker wrote me. Blackmail. Next. Name? Mary Turner. Alias? Just Mary Turner. Birthplace? Lower Massachusetts. Age? 22. Parents? Not living. Who brought you up? St. Martha's Orphanage. Charge? Grand larceny. Next. You might as well throw the jewelry away. By the time I get out, it'll be out of date. So will you. Oh, no. Real beauty never goes out of style. Hey, you. Come back here, your real beauty, and hand it over. Oh, come on. Be a sport. It helps like anything to have one. You heard me. Hand it over. They're against the rule, and you know it. Take a good look at yourself. Don't worry, Mary. The way these pictures look, your own mother wouldn't recognize you. That'll be enough of that. Hold it. In the old days, we used to exchange photos with the boys from Sing Sing. Boy, was I stuck on number 16243. Profile. Come on, look human, will you? You can do your bawling while you're having your fingerprints taken. I'd like to give you a footprint right where it belongs. This is your room, Mary. You get two towels a week. The shower is at the end of the hall. Your door is never locked. We want our girls to feel free. What am I supposed to do about those? Look the other way? You'll forget all about those windows in a day or two. I won't forget them in 10,000 days. My dear, I advise you not to take that attitude. 
You're being punished for a crime, and there's no need in punishing yourself still further. Why don't you let us help you? We do our best to understand a girl's individual problems and to help her reorganize her outlook and her future. Well, thanks just the same. My future's been organized. Here's your pumpkin, Cinderella, and your magic wand. Oh, thanks, Agnes. That's sweet of you. Where do we start? We gotta manicure the basement stairs. You mean they're gonna give us a chance to work our way up? A joke at last. I was beginning to think you didn't have it in you. I tell you, if you can clown a little, this is easy, Kit. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Well, what's it going to be? I want a book. Couldn't you be a little more precise? Do you want a green book, a yellow book, a thin one, a thick one? I think I'd like a thick one. How long are you in for? Three years. All right. I'll get you gone with the wind. Well, no. I'd like something to, to study. What is it you want to know, child? I'd like to know how it could happen. How what could happen? My being in jail for nothing. You don't keep out of jail by being innocent, kid. You keep out by being smart. You can't do anything against the law. You can do everything within the law. Yes, kid, you're talking to somebody who found that out. A little too late. I'm in from now on. And if I'd read a hundred pages out of any of those law books, right now I'd be free as a bird. Happy, rich, and guilty. I'll take one. Straight, will you? Say, this looks swell. You make that cheap stuff look like a million dollars. Now, with a blue fox fur and four rhinestone clips. Do you remember what I told you about simple clothes? Maybe. Not for my racket. The more flash, the more cash. I wouldn't go back to your racket, Agnes. What do you expect me to do? Retire and be a duchess? What are you in here for? You know. Blackmail. Did you ever hear of breach of promise? Yeah, the same thing. Now, there's a slight difference. When you sue someone for breach of promise, it's usually settled out of court in a nice, legal manner. You mean blackmail them with a lawyer? Right out in the open? It's legal. Say, that's a good idea, Mary. That's awfully good. The law's always good, if you have it on your side. Gee, that's a racket with police protection. Did you learn that in those thick books you're always reading? That's one of the things. What time is it, Miss McGinnis? You'll be free in an hour and a half, Agnes. Thank you, Miss McGinnis. Well, stand still, then. Look, the firm white part underneath the dress is me. Be kind to it. It's sensitive. Well, then stand still. An hour and a half. Want me to see anyone for you? No. Nope. Thanks. You haven't had anyone visit you since you checked in at this resort. Haven't you got any friends at all? I've got you. You bet your Aunt Harriet's toupee you got me. You better hurry, Agnes. You can't keep the warden waiting, you know. Gee, Mary, I hate to leave you, but I'll be waiting for you and I'll write you. Will you write me back? Of course I will, Agnes. Hurry up, Agnes. Oh, listen. There's only one thing I want to say. I never thought I'd be glad I was thrown in stir, but this time I am. Meeting you was worth it. Oh, hurry. Here you go. 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 Oh, oh. Red prints, the best bonds in the racket.
How's that look? You can't prove it by me. Pretty good. How's your southern drawl, Agnes? Mighty fine, sir. Well, now, here's the setup. It's like finding... Oh, I almost forgot. What time is it? Oh, never mind the time. What time is it? Ten after five. Oh, I've got to hurry. Where are you going? I've got to meet Mary. Who's Mary? We've got a fortune in our hands, and she's got to meet some small-time shoplifter she met in the clink. She's no crook. What do you want with her, then? She's a friend of mine, and I promised to meet her. All right. We'll be at your place at eight o'clock. And remember, it's a business appointment. Get rid of that dame before we get up there. See you later. To death, I'd miss you. The traffic was awful. I should have known you'd be of here. Of course you should. Isn't it a terrifying sensation to suddenly get out of out of school? Oh, you'll forget all about that as soon as we get a decent meal, Lydia. Come on. Oh, I wouldn't be surprised if heaven were a great big bathtub and you never had to get out. Violet, Ravinia, pine balsam, rose. Which do you want? I'll take them all. It'd take a ton of that to kill the smell of that medicated soap. You'll smell like a barber shop. Now let's see. How long has it been since you looked in a real mirror? Three years. I got an awful shock when I looked at it, but you'll be all right there. Hello, stranger. How have you been? As I thought so, you have changed. For the better. Maybe. If it's better to be wiser and older and a little bitter. Nonsense. You look young and innocent and sweet. Well, I hope so. It's the only acid I've got. Come in. Where is it? Hey, Aggie, where's the beer opener? Behind the coffee pot. Hurry up, will you? I got a date in an hour. All right, this will be short and sweet. I've been nursing this guy for six weeks. And here's the bill of goods I've sold him. A certain southern widow has inherited a whole sock full of bonds, but she can't sell them until the estate is probated. Now she needs dough, and she's willing to take a loss. Aggie, you're the southern widow. Okay, I'm Scarlett O'Hara. Now, all you've got to remember is that some silly Yankee law is stopping you from selling these bonds. But you're going to do it no matter what. Now, when he offers to buy, hand them the phonies. There they are. Eddie, you're Aggie's brother. We'll put you up at the hotel. Wait a minute, Joe. Why bring Eddie in on this? You don't really need him. A little atmosphere always helps. I know, Joe, but Eddie's already done three stretches. Next time, next time it's for life. Why do you make him take the risk if you don't need him? Come on, Joe. Leave him out of it just this once. Someday you're going to stop belly aching and the shock will knock me dead. Now, nobody's going to get into any trouble this time. We'll be in Florida with 50,000 bucks before you know it. Yum, yum. I'll catch me a swordfish. Yum, yum. I'll catch me a millionaire. Who's that? What's going on here? Now, don't get yourself in an uproar. This is Mary, the girl I was telling you about. Mary, this is Red, Eddie, Joe and June, all members of this club. How do you do? What's she doing here? She happens to be living here, that's all. You think that's being smart? Oh, you don't have to worry about Mary. She's okay. She's clever. Let her come along on this job as my sister. Well, thank you very much, Agnes, but I want no part of this job. Oh, you don't, eh? I certainly don't. And what's more, I don't think you do either, Agnes. Don't I? Now, wait a minute. What have you got against picking up ten grand in a hurry? Jail. I don't like jail. It's too confining. Don't worry, Mary. Joe knows what he's doing. Want to reform us? No. But I don't want to play the wrong side of a racket. I want to make easy money the same as you do. But I want to make it and stay where the cops can't touch me. Within the law. That's a pretty big order. Maybe. But I've got ideas. Mm, no doubt. I'll bet they're beautiful. Well, at least they don't include hiding in basements and fainting every time a cop wants to sell you a ticket to the policeman's ball. Maybe she's right. Lots of people make money without knocking over policemen. Sure they do. They just take advantage of every loophole in the law. And they don't wind up in front of a judge. You talk as though you know a lot about the law. I do. Got anything definite? Yes. Okay. Shoot. Well, this little plan is strictly legal. But it takes just as much brains and courage as safe cracking. Now, supposing one of us were to go into a store, any one of us, <laughs> I said to myself this morning, honey child, if you don't find the heaviest mink coat in the world before evening, you're just going to freeze to death. 
Oh. How much did you say this one was? Two thousand, madam. I'll take it. But I simply must have it this afternoon, because Honey Child's going to the theater tonight. Oh, well, uh, this is Saturday, and the last delivery's gone out. We'll have it sent up by special messenger within the hour, madame. Oh, that's mighty sweet of you. And where shall we send it? Mrs. Eleanor Randolph Allingham, and I'm at the Hotel Savoy Carlton. Where may I write a check? Right this way, madame. Thank you. Yeah? Carlton said she checked out an hour ago, right after the coat was delivered. It's obviously a phony, and she's trying to cash in on the coat before this check bounces. Well, we're very much obliged to you, Mr. Jenkins. Please try to detain her just a few minutes longer. Our attorney will be right down to have her arrested. My, the air is bracing. I feel like a million dollars. Oh, Mr. Gilder, the most awful thing has happened. There's a wire from the Mercantile Bank at Atlanta, and that check, the one Mrs. Allingham gave us for $2,000, it's good. Good heavens. Mr. Demarest has gone to the jail to see Mrs. Allingham now. He's afraid she's going to sue us for false arrest. Oh. Oh, Sarah, get me a... Get me a large bicarbonate of soda, will you? Yes, sir. Oh, Mrs. Allingham, I can't tell you how much we regret this unfortunate mistake. Pardon me, sir. I don't wish to discuss it. If you'll just give me a moment, I'm sure I can explain. I told you in that, that pawn shop when you arrested me that you was making a mistake. I told you that just because I needed some money quickly didn't mean I was dishonest. I know that, madam, but... I've been held here in this jail since Saturday night. I tell you, I never had such a horrible experience. If you will only try to understand our side There's of it, There's no Mrs. possible explanation. I've been humiliated beyond human endurance and somebody's going to suffer for it. Mr. Gilder feels that your client, Mrs. Allingham, is entirely in the right. Well, I should think he would. Oh, but definitely. However, Mr. Gilder is most anxious to prevent this case from coming to court. And if your client, Mrs. Allingham, would keep that in mind, perhaps she might be induced to settle the case out of court. Oh, no, no, no. I'm deeply offended. Well, that's too bad. We were prepared to make a substantial settlement. Uh, it does seem to me that a settlement would save you a lot of trouble, Mrs. Allingham. Oh, and possibly some painful publicity. Oh. Mr. Gilder thought that perhaps 20,000? And costs. Well, naturally, and costs. Well, it's all so embarrassing, but whatever Mr. Harden says, and so long as Mr. Gilder learns his lesson. Oh, fine, fine. Now, would you be so kind as to examine this release, Mr. Harding? Oh, thank you. Just to make it out to cash. Of course. Twenty grand, it worked. Oh, it was a lucky day when Aggie ran into you, Mary. This is just the beginning, Joe. We're gonna go places and Gilda's going to pay for the ride. I told him once he'd pay me back. Well, he's starting to, but just starting to, that's all. There's something I want you to do for me, Joe. Name it. Find out everything you can about Gilda's son. Hey, Dick, your customer was here. Oh, was she? Where'd she go? Up there, taking a lesson. Sell me back any minute. That's ah, swell. What are you trying to sell, Dick? Yourself or the plane? Well, our first rule of a salesman is to look neat. Yeah, some salesman. You've been demonstrating this plane for a week. I wonder what else you've been demonstrating. Get that plane shine up, or I'll demonstrate a left hook, you greaseball. <laughs> Eggshell. You can sell them tomorrow. Thanks, that's grand. I'm particularly anxious to get my license. Hello, Dick. Hello, Jake. Hello, customer. Nice landing. Hello, Mr. Greer. Gilder is the name. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Gilder. Where's the ship? There she blows. Over there. You know, I must have made a vivid impression on you. A week's flying, you don't even know my name. Oh, that's not fair. If I remember the names of everyone who wants to sell me something, I'd be a walking telephone book. You'd make a good one. Why? Because you're quite a number. Ooh, that's really terrible. Oh, isn't it? Listen, will you tell me something? Maybe. When you called up a week ago, you were very anxious to buy a planet. Since then, you've been cooling off. As a man who has to make his living selling planes, I'd like to know why. Well, I couldn't say. I want the best, and maybe you just haven't convinced me that's it. Well, how about giving me just one more chance to convince you right now? Only fair enough. Come on. <laughs> Oh, 
I wonder what the poor people are doing tonight. Say, do you suppose Myrna Loy really answers auto fan mail like it says in Hollywood fun? Sure, that's all she's got to do. Uh, uh, is everlast in one word or two? I don't know. Make it always. Thanks. Where'd Mary say she was going? Out with young Gilda for a change. She's been building him up for three weeks now. I'd like to know what the payoff's gonna be. When Mary wants us to know, she'll tell us. Maybe there ain't no payoff. Maybe... Maybe it's love. Could be. He's young and handsome. Ought to look awful good to Mary after being in stir for three years. Why don't you shut up? Expecting anybody? Probably Mary. She must have forgotten the key. Yeah, but not taking her chances. Good evening, sir. I'm looking for Joe Garson. And whom shall I say is calling, sir? I'll tell him myself, Red. And incidentally, uh, with the silliest looking butler I ever laid eyes on. Oh, there's no doubt about it. One can over-grouse some more, you know. It becomes no longer sport, merely butchery. Don't tell me I'm crashing into society. Some of the 400 are going to be awfully sore about missing this party. Where are the debutantes? Under the couch? Hello, Joe. Glad to see you again. Well, I can't say the same for you. And Lord Fathergill. Haven't seen you since the lineup in Delancey Street. Miss Lynch, I believe. Well, what's new? Have you read any good books lately, Lancelot? Don't call me that. Well, it's your name, isn't it? I had a change, legally. <laughs> you should have had a change when you were a kid. You wouldn't have had so many fights. Yeah. Then I wouldn't have been hit over the head with a milk bottle. Well, that was all in the game. Sounds like a good game to me. Let's play it now. We are. Are we? Mm-hmm. Used to be called Cops and Robbers, only we're playing it for keeps now. Yeah, and you're still losing. You're pretty smart, Joe. This time you're in trouble. Listen, Cassidy, we're in the clear, and you know it. Eddie, you're a three-time loser. This time it's life. Better talk soft. Please, Eddie, don't argue. Who's she? Leave her out of this. Oh, yeah? Where's the Turner Dame? The Turner Dame's right here, Sergeant. Oh, what can we do for you? Some tea, perhaps? How do you do, Miss Turner? I've heard a lot about you. Oh, thank you. I can imagine. Well, don't bother to take off your hat, Miss Turner. I don't mind. I suppose you know we've got you called on the Mortimer Bond case. Mortimer? Mortimer? I think. Oh, I think you'll remember it shortly. $30,000 worth of United States government securities. Oh, yes, there. I might as well tell you now that Inspector Burke is going to give you a break. If you return the bonds, he's going to forget how you got them. Are you working for the police department or a collection agency? You might as well play ball and get off easy. You know, Sergeant, sometimes I think the police department isn't quite bright. Perhaps you'll have a better opinion of us after we're through with you. Uh, Inspector Burke knows, of course, that Mr. Garson is Mortimer's partner. Well? Under the law, Sergeant, I think you should know that a partner can withdraw any or all of the partnership funds with or without the consent of the other partner. If you want more detailed instruction as to the law, you can look it up under the statute which specifically protects Mr. Garson. Article 28, Section 320 of the Penal Code of the State of New York. Am I boring you? You have a very good lawyer, Miss Turner. Yes, I think we have. Who is he? Me. Now, is there anything more we can do for you? Yes. You can all come on downtown with me. Some other time, perhaps. Right now. We'll drop into headquarters and see what Inspector Burke has to say about this. We're not going any place, Sergeant. But you are, and you can take this with you. What do you call this? I call it a temporary restraining order, because that's what it is. You'll find that it's signed by Judge Lawrence of the Supreme Court. And it orders the police department to let us alone until they have legal proof that we've broken the law. You've got a lot of answers, haven't you? I know it doesn't pay to break the law, Sergeant. You're a smart girl. It's a shame to see you fooling yourself. There are two kinds of law, Miss Turner, the letter and the spirit. You didn't get that $30,000 honestly. I don't care whether you broke the law or not. You're working a crooked game, and sooner or later you're going to get it in the neck. Thank you for your fatherly advice, Mr. Cassidy. Red, would you be kind enough to show Mr. Cassidy to the door? The outside of it. Lancelot. If you ever get into any trouble, let me know. I'll lend you my lawyer. Thanks, Joe. Now, Red, a good butler never does that. Here, let me show you. Always hold your elbows to the side. Get it? I'll be seeing you. Gee, Mary. 
Mary, you were marvelous. You had it all over him like a tent. My compliments, Mary. Oh! Boy, was Cassidy surprised. Then me too. <laughs> Thanks, kids. Well, I'm going to turn in. Sure, you must be tired. Fix up a drink for us, Red, will you? I need it. Is there any objection to me having a drink? <laughs> Can I speak to you for a minute? Sure, come in. I want to ask you something. What, Joe? Well, it's none of my business. What isn't? Well, maybe I'm an awful heel to come butting in like this, but I've got my fingernails chewed off almost to the elbow. What's going on, Mary? I mean about this young Gilda kid. Oh, don't worry about him, Joe. Everything's working out on schedule. Then you're not stuck on him. Mm -mm. Not guilty. Not guilty. I've always said those are the most beautiful words in the language. That all that was bothering you? Yeah. I guess I don't have to tell you how I feel about you. Oh, you're very sweet, Joe. How do I rate, Mary? Tops. I feel pretty awful whenever you're out with Gilda. Listen, Joe. I told you once I'd make old man Gilda pay for what he did to me. Yeah, you told me. Well, I'm going to do it. It's all I've been living for since I came out. I'm going to brand him just as he branded me. Ever been to Virginia? No, I've never been anywhere. You like it? Gee, it's fun going hundreds of miles just to a party. Oh, you've been to thousands of parties, I guess. No? With thousands of guys. No, really, I haven't. I wish I knew you better. Why? Why? Well, maybe I'm just nosy, but when someone starts kicking the guys hard around, he gets a little curious about who's doing the kicking. Oh, you silly. I'm not kicking you hard around. Besides, you know, my name is Mary Turner, and, well, isn't that enough? It's 20 times too much, only you got me winging. And... Hey, look out. Went through a red light. That was no red light. That was Mars. Now, uh, I'll start talking, Mary. Begin with when the doctor first slapped you, where he slapped you, and put you in your crib. That's right. They do that, don't they? Isn't it foolish to ever expect to be happy in a world where if you don't start crying the minute you're born, they spank you until you do? Fine. Now, at least I know one thing. You don't expect to be happy. But you're wrong there. Tell me more. Oh, there isn't much to tell. I led sort of a secluded life, in a way. And been by myself year after year. You don't like people a lot. No, I don't like people a lot. They can hurt you too much. Well, I, I sort of stayed away from things for a while, and then I decided it was silly for a girl to be locked up and never go anywhere or talk to anybody, so I decided to come out and look at life and see if it was really as bad as it seemed. And was it? Mm-mm. Not quite. It'll keep getting better and better for you and me, Mary, beginning tonight. Hello, Dick. Hi, everybody. Hello, Hello Aunt Carolyn. Hello, Warren. Hello, Dick. I'd like you both to meet Mary Turner. Mary, this is my favorite Aunt Carolyn and my cousin Warren. How do you do? How do you do? Does this fit your conception of a Virginia plantation? Well, I miss the chorus of pickaninny singing. Well, they quit us. They got a better job on the radio. <laughs> you see those stables over there? You mean out there where I can't see anything at all? <laughs> well, they're there. They're the scene of my first buddy knows. I hope you deserved it. Maybe. I tried to take out one of the hunters one day without my uncle's permission. And the colored stable boy said no. We argued. But you should have seen the other guy. He got two black eyes. I think so. You couldn't really tell. <laughs> you like it here, don't you? Yes. It means my boyhood to me. Quiet, friendly, and easygoing. No rush or hurry. We do move faster, don't we? There isn't any time or distance anymore. People do everything at fever speed. They meet today, get married tomorrow, and divorce next week. I like that program, except for the divorce part. But we didn't meet today. We met almost a month ago. And have I let tomorrow slip by? There's always tomorrow. You mean that? Possibly. We've been trailing her and her accomplices for weeks. As soon as Sergeant Cassidy learned that the boy she was meeting was your son, I called Mr. Demarest. I'm very grateful for the information, Inspector. <clears throat> I'll put Dick straight about this young woman. I suggest you don't waste any time, sir. It seems the girl's made quite an impression on him. Well, it might not be a bad idea to threaten her. A good, good scare might, uh, might make her move to other pastures. 
We're going to give her all the high pressure we can, Mr. Gilder. I hope it'll work. Uh, pardon me, Mr. Gilder. You told me to let you know when Mr. Richard arrived. He's in the reception room. Thank you. I'll settle this right now. Come with me, will you? I want you to tell Dick just what you told me. Yes. Dick. Oh, I beg your pardon. I thought my son was here. He'll be here in a moment. Thank you. Haven't we met somewhere? You're Miss... Uh, Miss... Mr. Cassidy, won't you introduce me to Mr. Gilder? This happens to be Miss Mary Turner, the young lady we were just discussing. Oh. May I ask what you're doing here? I came to meet you. I want to warn you, young lady, that any plans that you may have had better exclude my son. I'm sorry, Mr. Gilder. I'm afraid my plans include your son very definitely. I'm afraid that might be pretty inconvenient. Really? Yeah, I think some other city might be healthier for you. Let's say, uh, Chicago? You can leave any time within the next 24 hours. Where's that smart answer now, Mary? You'll have it in a moment, Mr. Cassidy. Dad! Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Hello, Dick. Good evening. I see you've already met Mary, so I can't use the speech I had ready. Just a minute, no, sir. No, it can't wait. I've got a big surprise for you and I won't keep. And Dad, the speech is all about being sorry that you weren't with us and that I didn't get a chance to talk it all over with you first. But once you know her, you'll realize I had to grab her before she changed her mind. Dick, what are you saying? Just that I'd like you to meet my wife, Mrs. Richard Gilder. There's your answer, Mr. Cassidy. We were married this morning. Married? Yes, don't you understand? I said I married your son this morning. Wait a minute, Dick. Answer this carefully. Do you know anything about this lady? Has she told you where she's been and what she's done? Why, yes, she's told me everything I want to know. I see. That's enough. It's obvious that he doesn't know. That's sufficient grounds. We can have this marriage annulled. Have it annulled? Yes, Dick. I'm sorry to have to tell you this. Terribly sorry. But this woman is a criminal. A criminal? She's a thief. She spent three years in the state penitentiary. And now she's the ringleader of a notorious gang of crooks. Ask Inspector Burke or Sergeant Cassidy. That's right. It isn't true, is it, Mary? Yes, it's true. You're married to a thief. Why, no, I'm not. You're no more thief than I am. You might as well face the facts, Dick. All you have to prove is that you didn't know this woman had a criminal record. Do you really think I married this girl without knowing her? Well, I know her better than anyone in the world. Better than you know her. Better than the criminal records know her. Mary never did anything wrong. It isn't in her. Mary, tell him I'm right. You were innocent, weren't you? In the eyes of the law, you're married to an ex-convict. Never mind that. Answer me. You were innocent. What difference does it make now? Your father sent me to prison and I served every minute of my time. Three full years. And that's why you married my son. That's exactly why. Oh, you're wrong, Mary. You couldn't have. You married me because you love me. I married you because I hate your father and I knew how much it would hurt him. Don't say that. You can't live on hate, Mary. You can't get any satisfaction out of revenge. Stop it, son. It's no use. Yes, it is, because I'm speaking the truth and Mary knows it. I can see she does. Your father's right, Dick. It's no use. You can't spend your life getting even. Mary, I'm no preacher. I don't pretend to be. All right, you married me for the wrong reason. But I married you for the right reason. Give yourself a chance, Mary. This man took away every chance I ever had. He took my life, my name. Yes, Mr. Gilder. You took away my name and gave me a number. Well, now I've got your name. Just a minute, Dick. Well, I'm afraid you're in for it. That woman is warped and vindictive. Nothing doing, huh? No, I tried to make a cash settlement for a quick annulment and no publicity. And? And she said, thanks for the idea. I gather that she intends to write the entire story in the most sensational way possible and sell it to any publication that'll print it. Hmm. Only a criminal mind could think like that. Now, Dick, you see what kind of a woman she is. The only thing I can see is that Mary hates you and everything connected with you. Of course she hates him. He caught her stealing and sent her to jail. You see, Dick, I've sent other thieves to jail without giving them a persecution complex. The fact that she hates me so much proves that she's dangerous and, and vindictive. Well, you've said it yourself, Dad. Other thieves haven't felt that way. Now, doesn't that make you think? Why should this particular shoplifter come out of jail and spend the rest of her life trying to hurt you? Why, there's only one reason. She didn't belong in jail. She must have been innocent, and I'm going to prove it. Really? How? I don't know yet. But I tell you, she's innocent, and there must be a way to prove it. You have a world of self-confidence. How can you be so sure? 
You'll have to fall in love to find out, Mr. Demarest. Poor Dick. She's got him hypnotized. We've got to get him out of this mess. Can't the police do anything? Not until she breaks the law. Right now, she's sitting tight with plenty of money. I've got it. We'll start a civil action against them to recover the settlement on that false arrest. We'll allege conspiracy. <laughs> you might get your money back that way, but you can't put them in jail. No, but we can levy an attachment against their bank accounts. That'll tie their hands a bit. That's a good idea. And it might even force them into something foolish. Wait a minute. I've got a better idea. Sarah, have McGuire come in, will you? Yes, sir. They can't always fool the law. Nobody can. If you starve a rat, he'll come out for cheese sometime. Take the money away from a crook and he'll turn crook again. I'll add McGuire on their trail night and day. And when the rats come out... And you get busy on that attachment right away. Yes, sir, right away. I tell you, there's nothing we can do about it right now. But Mary, they've tied up my bank account. I can't get any money at all. Isn't there something crooked about that? Guys like Gilda can't do anything crooked. When they cheat you, it's called high finance. When they tie up your money, it's called legal ingenuity. Chuck it, chuck it. We've got some legal ingenuity of our own. You can't fight them legally. You've got to use a gun or a lead pipe to get anywhere. Well, you're half right. Maybe it doesn't pay to be honest, but it pays to be careful. All we have to do is weather this depression. The bank will give us our money eventually. Yeah, and we'll eat eventually, too. And we don't starve to death first. Oh, we can hold out. Sure. We can live on our fat, I suppose. You can. An army could live off the fat on your head alone. Oh, I'll get it. What is it? I want to see Mrs. Gilder. I told you ten times, Mary Turner ain't in. There is no Mary Turner, and besides, I just saw her come in. The man has an awful time getting in to see his wife. What do you want? I called to have a little chat. But there are some things a married couple don't discuss publicly. Not that I mind these good people. Your friends are my friends. You can count me out on that. Your friendship's a great loss, sir. Excuse me. I won't be a moment. Well, what is it? I, uh, I called to consult you about our honeymoon. I've been figuring out a thousand places we might go. I'm sorry, I have no time for your travelogues. I have a lot to do. Oh, yes, I understand you've taken up writing. Who told you? Detective Cassidy. You're composing the story of your life for True to Life magazine? Yes. How Mary Turner avenged herself on the great Mr. Gilder by marrying his son. That's the plot. You'll not get anything out of what you're doing, Mary. You'll hurt yourself as much as you're hurting father. I know there's a kind of a pain in you and a kind of a horror of what happened to you. But you can't get rid of pain by trying to give it to others. You've never hated anybody, have you? No. You've never known very much about suffering. I'm finding out. Well, find out good, then. Go away. Don't be a fool. There's nothing for us to talk about. We haven't a single thing in common. Except that we're married. Well, I'd forget about that if I were you. Because we'll never be married any more than we are right this minute. Not as long as I live. Mary, what's the matter? Mary, what happened? Nothing, really, Aggie. I'm all right. I... But you're upset. What did he say to you? Nothing. But he must have said something. Just that he loved me. But, Mary, that's what you wanted. Yes, you're right. That's what I wanted. Good day, gentlemen. What's he so happy about? Because his old man... Because his old man's got all our dough, that's why. I'd whistle, too, if I had my chips back. How'd you like to get a whole set of new chips off his old man? I'd like it fine. Does Mary have to know about it? Well, why not? She'd crack down on it if she does. It isn't quite legal. Well, go on. Let's hear it. Remember Mary telling us about the old masterpieces in Gilda's house? They're worth a safe full of bonds apiece, and they're easier to lift. Says who? Listen. I've been a guest of the state three times now, 
Next time we have a misunderstanding, I'm going to be in for life. I'm not taking any chances. You got it all laid out, huh? I got a plan from beginning to end. When Mary told us about the pictures, I went to see a friend of mine, Joe Green. He's got an art gallery here and handles a lot of hot art from Europe. Sure he's okay? Don't worry. I've got enough on him to sink him. And he told me that Gilda's Rembrandt is priceless. A Rembrandt? A remnant? Rembrandt, a picture, a masterpiece. Green told me just what it looked like. A poor old man. Oh, who wants a picture of a poor old man? It's just worth 200 grand, that's all. Well, it's not what it's worth. It's can we get rid of it. Sounds like trying to sell Boulder Dam. Call up Joe Green yourself. He'll tell you. Here, he's in the book. Okay, I'm in. It's just as you say, Eddie, it's not quite legal. But it may be quitting money for all of us. See? Joseph Green, art dealer, Plaza 89770. Get him on the phone. Hello? Oh, just one moment. Mr. Green? It's for you, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> Hello? Mr. Green? This is Eddie Morton. Listen, I'd like you to tell a friend of mine about that uh, proposition we were discussing the other day. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Just a minute. Hello. Yeah. Well, I don't like talking over the phone either, but I wanted to be sure. Okay, can you have the dough by tomorrow morning? You'll have it then. Fine. I'll be waiting for you. Don't take it so hard, kid. Take what so hard? I don't know, whatever it is. At least you're not washing down the basement steps in the pen. I almost wish I were. Boy, have you got it bad. Well, he is sort of nice. Sort of nice. You could spend a dozen lifetimes not find another like him. I know. Think of all I've done to him, Aggie. He doesn't resent it. Doesn't bear the slightest grudge. I don't understand it. Well, some people are different from other people, I guess. That's a profound remark. Is it? Here are the boys. Well, they couldn't have gotten out of the show yet. I wonder why they didn't ask us to come. Something funny is going on. Hello. Hello. Oh, gee, I'm glad you're in. I'm feeling terribly nervous. What's the matter? The drink will calm you down. Well, I must say you're taking it very calmly. Taking what calmly? You mean you don't know? What is this? Don't know what? The boys are robbing the Gilda house tonight. Robbing the Gilda house? They're crazy. They're on the way there now. I tried to stop them, but I couldn't. Oh, Mary, I'm so frightened. If Eddie's caught all... When did they leave? I came over right after Eddie left. He's been acting funny all day, and I finally got it out of him what it was. They should be there by now. It's set for 11. Mary, can you do anything? Quarter to 11. Oh, the fools, the fools. This is suicide. Are you going to try to stop them? I've got to. I'll go with you. No, you stay here. They may need you for an alibi. Well, I'll put you in a taxi. Anyway. I did what you told me to. Yes. She's on her way over now. That's great. Okay. Well, my tip's correct. They're going to knock off the Gilda place. Let's go, boys. What's that? That's okay. It's the light from the Metropolitan Tower. I don't like it. Reminds me of the light they turn on you in the lineup. Red, pull those curtains. That's it. 200 grand for a mug like that? Even I'm better looking. Quiet. Never 
mind the frame. Cut the canvas out. Might damage it. I can't see you. Shh. The window. Mary, what are you doing here? You lied to me. Go ahead, Eddie. You've got to get out of here. And that'll be get what we came for. Joe, I'm not going to let you do this. Mary, what's stopping you? Eddie, get that thing down. It's fastened to the wall. You've got to get up and help, Red. You know why I'm doing this, Mary. This is our stake. When we've pulled this job, we'll go somewhere. Just you and I. Please, Joe, if I mean anything to you, get out of here. Oh, I'll get that thing down. Here, Red, take Joe, for my sake. Somebody's coming. The lights. We better blow. Hold it. Give me the flash. No! Dick! Gary! Stop it. Let him go. What is this, anyway? What's the idea? Don't talk. Any of you. You'll recognize your voices. Let them talk. I know you're stooges, but they don't have to worry. Just empty your pockets, all of you, and get out the way you came in. Now, take it easy, Sonny. If you don't leave right now, I'll call the police. That wouldn't be a very good idea, Sonny. Now, get that picture down. Joe, please, leave the picture where it is. So this is why you wired me you were in Chicago. Chicago? I've got a telegram right here. I just happened to phone your apartment to check up on the address, and Agnes told me you hadn't gone. You got a telegram from me? Yes, it says you're in trouble and you want me to meet you in Chicago. So that's it. They tried to get you out of the way so they could frame us. Fred, turn on those lights. I want to look into the face of every man in this room. Is that a genuine Rembrandt? <sighs> Certainly not. That copy used to hang in the billiard room. Not worth anything. Joe, whose idea was it to break in here? He's lying. I tell you, it's worth 200 grand. Eddie's been acting queer from the start, wanting to boss everything. No, no. I was on the level, I swear. Using us to railroad her. Watch the door, Red. I got a gun. I'll shoot the second that hits me. You'll only shoot once, rat. Quick, Joe, the cops, they're coming. Just waiting for us. How can we get out of here? I don't know. Dick, please. Upstairs with the second door on your right to the roof. Quick, Mary. I never saw anyone killed before. She can't make it. I'll take care of her. But they might grab her. Leave that to me. Joe, give me your gun. They might catch you. Is it a treasure hunt? Some suspicious characters were seen around here. Search the house. Now, Miss Turner. If we have any need for the police, we'll call them. If you're satisfied there's no one here, I'd appreciate your leaving. What's that picture doing down? I really don't know. Perhaps the butler can tell you. You'll save yourself a lot of trouble, Mr. Gilder, if you'll tell us all you know about this. Now that I come to think of it, when I came in, the door was ajar. I thought I heard someone in the back hall. Perhaps I scared them when I came in. I... Yeah. You might give the, uh, the ground floor the once over. I'll go with you and... Uh... All right. You'd better look in the cellar, too. 
Yeah. Brown, stay where you are. They got English Eddie. Phone Burke at headquarters. Can't make murder within the law, Miss Turner. Where's the gun? What gun? Better stay out of this, young fella. What's happened? Murder. Murder? All right, stop talking. Who did it? Did you? No. Did he? Now look here, Cassidy. Did he do it? Yes. Yes, he did it. Mary. Don't talk, Dick. Don't talk. Trust me. Just a minute, young lady. Now look here. You can't do that. Oh, yeah? What's this? Speak up, Dick. You're protecting this woman. And if you think this is going to be your revenge, I won't let you get away with it. I don't want revenge. Not anymore. Well, it's pretty late to be saying that. Yes, I know it is. I wish to heaven I could undo everything I've done. I wish I was lying there instead of that poor fool. Stop it, Mary. This wasn't your fault. Everything's my fault. You were right, Dick. I wanted to make others suffer as I did. Well, I've succeeded. I sacrificed everyone I loved. Now, don't be taken in, son. Young lady, you're not fooling me. You wanted your revenge and you've got it. Now they're going to try my son for murder. Yes, they can try him for murder. You bet we can. But you can't convict him. The man Dick killed was a burglar. And he shot him in defense of his home. You're dying, Red. What of it? Why not finish with a clean slate? Who killed Eddie Morton? Santa Claus. Who killed Eddie Morton? Santa Claus, I tell you. Wasn't I there? Martin told Santa he didn't believe in him. And Santa pulls the heater out of his whiskers and lets him have it. Come on now, who killed Eddie Morton? I told you who killed him. I did. Never mind that. Who killed Eddie Morton? May I have a glass of water, please? Who killed Eddie Morton? You got no chance, kid. Who killed Eddie Morton? Who killed Eddie Morton? I tell you, my husband killed him in defense of his home. Then how did Joe Garson's fingerprints get on that gun? It was Joe's gun. Dick grabbed it. Who killed Eddie Morton? I told you. Where's Joe Garson? Where's he hiding? I've said all I'm going to. Who killed Eddie Morton? Dick Gilder in defense of his home. Save your breath, Demarest. Richard Gilder's under arrest for murder. I know he didn't do it, but he's going to stay here till he puts the finger on who did. Yeah. They just brought in Joe Garson, Inspector. Great. Send him right up. If Garson pulls the gag that Gilder shot a burglar in defense of his home, I'll climb right into a straitjacket. Yeah, I wish McGuire had been the one before he framed this whole thing. Certainly got us in a fine mess of mulligatawny. Come right in, Joe. Want this door closed? No, I'll leave it open. It's not exactly customary in the third degree. Oh, we're through with all that. Sit down, Joe. Yeah. I never saw you boys so polite. What's on your mind, officer? I'm going to talk straight to you, Joe. It's fine. We've got this case on ice, so if you want to talk, it's okay. If you don't, that suits us, too. I'm waiting. Let's have it. And I'm going to try to pump you or make you squeal on her. But if you want to kick in with a few little pieces of evidence, we'll remember it. Squeal on who? We've got the goods on Mary Turner, so it really isn't squealing. Don't talk stupid. Now, look, Garson, here's our case. Mary found out you were doing a job at the Gilda home. She found out that Eddie had framed you and her, too. She came busting in to try and stop you. Eddie insisted on going through with it. She lost her head, grabbed your gun, and let him have it. Looks like you're in luck this time, Joe. Only a few years as accessory. You want to talk? Not very much. Okay, Cassidy, we booked Mary Turner, and that's the end of that. You gonna book her? That's right and for murder. Take him away, Cassidy. Now, wait a minute. You boys aren't very bright. Yeah, the jury will be the best judge of that. Come on. Now, wait a minute, I tell you. You're not going to book Mary, and she never killed anybody. We've got the goods on her. we got her statement. That's enough for us. You're lying. You've got the goods on nobody. And she made no statement. Not Mary. But you're working for Gilda. Just the same as those double-crossing private dicks of his that framed her. And you'll hand her Mary Tanner again on a silver platter with a wrap around her neck as an accessory. And she won't be able to fight out of it and she'll go back again for nothing. Nothing. 
Here's your case, coppers. You don't need to pull any more phony tricks. I shot Eddie Morton, and I had good reasons. Bring in your stenographers and get me a mouthpiece. All right, Cassidy, release Mary Turner and Richard Gilder. Okay, that's the whole story. Now, give me it and I'll sign it. Joe! What have you been telling him? Nothing that I hadn't ought to. You can go home now. He told you? Yes. Wait a minute, Joe. Listen to me. We got the case solid. They can't break it. Tear that up. It's a lie. It was Dick. Dick did it. Oh, it's better this way, Mary. It saves everybody a lot of hollering and slapping around. Besides, nobody's going to do much to me for killing a guy like Eddie Morton in self-defense. So long, Mary. Good luck from now on. This way, folks. Don't take it so hard, Mary. It wasn't anything that you could help. It's all my fault, the whole thing. If it hadn't been for me, this wouldn't have happened. It, it's not fair to let me go. Oh, Dick, I can't stand it. How much longer have I got to go on hurting people? I... No longer, dear. It's over. You threw with all that for good. I'm still a thief to everybody but you. You don't have to be a thief to anybody. Oh, what difference does it make now? Mary, I, uh, I always knew it couldn't be you. I hired detectives and they found the real thief. It was funny. She was almost anxious to confess. I can understand that. It's horrible to know you've hurt someone else. I'm afraid you'll have to hurt somebody else. It's gonna be an awful blow to Dad when he realizes what he did to you. But it's only just. You never doubted me, did you? Oh, Dick, I never knew there was anyone in this world like you. Dick, I didn't want to fall in love with you. But I couldn't help it. Well, Mr. Gilder, your father's on the telephone. You can take it there. Thanks. He uh, would come in at a time like this. Hello, Dad. Yes, it's all over. Garson confessed. Yes, Mary's with me right here. Bring her home with you, son, please. If she can find it in her heart to forgive me. All right, Dad. You know, she's still got a tough session coming up with the district attorney. I'll ask her. Thanks, Dad. Well, I've got it coming to me, whatever it is. Dad wants you to forgive him. I've waited four years to get revenge on your father. Now I've got it. But it's no good. I found that in hurting others, you only hurt yourself. Well... Come on, Dick. Let's go home. Hey, you two lovebirds. Aggie. Wait for baby. Now, you all's got to put me to work. You know, I'm sure a real refined southern widow lady ought to do very well for herself in the gentleman's lingerie department. <laughs> <laughs>